Scott, what did Eric Bieniemy say to you guys after the AFC Championship game that you think you can still apply to this one? Man, EB was a was a special coach here for uh, for a long, long time, man. And I um, he's like a, he's like my uncle or a, a father figure in the football world for me. And um, everybody knows how fired up he can get, and I, I definitely share that same passion to, to come into work every single day and to play this game. And um, one of my favorite coaches of all time. So I think uh, the biggest thing that that we could take away from who he was as a as a player, as a as a coach, is just his passion and his desire to to be ready for every single uh, scenario out there on the field. His his football awareness and his understanding of the game um, was second to none when it comes to football and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping for the best for him uh, coming in, in, in his uh, near coaching career, but um, I think uh, who he is as a person is always going to go with me in life. The defense is playing the way that they are. What does that do for you as an offense? Man, uh, it fuels us with confidence, but um, we got to start uh, putting up more and more touchdowns as an offense and uh, knowing that that's, uh, that's going to be big playing against the San Fran team is uh, putting up touchdowns instead of uh, field goals and making sure we um, we make sh make their offense feel the pressure to keep scoring. Yeah, the Eagles, baby. They, um, I'll tell you what, man, the Mexico City crowd playing down there at the Azteca was absolutely unbelievable, man. That that experience I'll remember for the rest of my life and um, hopefully we get another chance to play down there in the future. Um, the, the crowd down there was so electric and just so um, open and warm to, to the game of football and uh, or Amer fo American football and um, it was an experience that I, I, I absolutely enjoyed. I'm pumped that it's coming to Kansas City, man. I'll be, uh, it'll be right there in my backyard and I'll be able to have some fun going to all the games. Uh, you are a role model for your young teammates. They even say that you are the best tight end in the history of the NFL, and they want to adapt some of your abilities as a player. What do you have to say about that? About my teammates thinking that I'm a good tight end, it might be a little biased. Um, we have a lot of fun in the building, so hopefully I won over every teammate that I've ever had. But um, I think this team is special because of how close we are and how much we support each other. You are the best tight end in history. I'm trying to be the best tight end on Sunday. I know that. How do you feel? Um, how do you feel this team is different as opposed to four years ago when you played um, the Niners last time? I mean, just different people, different uh, different players, uh, different coaching staff um, on both sides, really. So it's uh, not only are they seeing something different, but we're seeing something different. One of our corners is over there playing, and it looks to see that uh, seem that he he's liking it over there a little bit more. So hopefully, we can get this win and make him make him miss Kansas City just a little bit. I just love it. I love it. I love uh, seeing my teammates get to show their personalities, get to tell their stories. It's, um, you know, coming up here is a once in a lifetime experience that I've been able to, to you know, go through a few times. And um, I guess I'm just comfortable in the, in the atmosphere and in the, in the chaos. Uh, that goes around us and um, you just got to embrace it you know the, the more you fight it the more pissed off you might get or more negative you might start thinking I'm a guy that likes to think about things a positive way and you know what um, for a week why not go through all this craziness uh, and showcase my, my story my family and uh, everybody that uh, has got me to this point I, I got power bombed through my living room floor as a kid, uh, and we broke the we broke the wooden floor, and then, and then we just slid the couch over it so that our parents wouldn't know. Um, my mom was vacuuming like two weeks later and figured it out, and sure enough, we got in trouble for it. But um, yeah, growing up in the '90s as a, as a boy, I feel like you had no choice but to emulate wrestlers on the playground, at recess, uh, and in the in the living room, in the backyard. It was uh, it was everybody, but for for me and my brother, it was probably Stone Cold and The Rock. Talking about Super Bowl, you said that this is the one that you want the most anxious that you want to win. Why is that, and what have you learned about the previous ones? Well, I learned uh, I learned how to lose one, and I learned how to win two. So I've uh, I've developed an understanding of the entire like grand scheme of things. Um, and I just, uh, this team specifically is, uh, is special to me. I think we've, we've gone through a lot of ups and downs. Um, a lot of guys have been challenged to uh, step up in big moments, and they have. And uh, you just love to see that. You, love, you, you want it that much more for a guy when uh, people are counting him out and he finds a way to persevere through that. 
And uh, yeah, this team is a, it's, just, it's a, as special as a team that I've ever been on. And um, it just makes you want it that much more because we're in the moment. How do you quantify the dynasty across all sports? Like how many championships quantify the dynasty? I couldn't even tell you. That's a great question. I would, I would say um, you get three. I think three is a, is a lucky number. You, one is anybody can be one and done. I think two is, is special, but three is when you solidify yourself as, as a dynasty for sure. Patrick, 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 Last event, this is George Kittle. Your dedication to football, it's pretty clear. Like, it's not what you need. As your profile's grown, you've had more opportunities, like, outside of football. Um, is that something for you that, like, comes naturally? Is it uh, something you're conscious of? Like, have you approached that? I've been conscious of that since I've been in the league. I think um, the one thing about the NFL is um, it's, it's historically short-lived. There, You have to find another uh, career after this, you know? And... Um, I, I didn't want to wait until the end of my career to start finding out what I want to do uh, after football. And um, sure enough, it's always been on my mind to trying to find something I love, maybe not as much as football because I love competing and I've, I found just a, a desire for this game, but find something that I enjoy doing outside of the game. And uh, that's always been the focus is um, getting myself outside of the uh, face mask, out from under the helmet and, uh, and into, you know, whatever uh, fields that I can get into to try and figure out what I'm going to do after football. Travis, you've faced a lot of adversity throughout this entire season. Most you ever have. That's had a lot of prognosticators doubting you all. Do you feel like that's made you all battle-tested ready for moments exactly like these? 100%, man. I think uh, the ups and downs throughout this season has made this team uh, a lot closer and want to play that much harder for us. Travis, Patrick came into the league, he came into a, a team that was already successful and set up for success. Do you think he would have become an all-time great regardless of where he'd landed, even if he'd landed? In the once in a lifetime player, man. When you, you put that guy on a team, he naturally makes everybody better. So uh, I, I got confidence he would have been Pat Mahomes no matter where he ended up. But uh, the Pat Mahomes and Andy Reid special is, uh, is unique and uh, definitely one for the ages. How happy I make my family on game days. I wish there was a, there was a camera in the suite or on, on my family every single time I scored or every time we won a big game. Um, seeing their excitement. Uh, seeing my brother against the Bills go absolutely nuts and show his love for 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 my success, um, those are the moments I'm most proud of. Travis, your mom has been handling media like a pro. How do you think she's been handling it? Communications all? major. Where do you guys think I, my, me and my brother get it from? Uh, she's a she's a saint. My mother is absolute just absolute sweetheart, and um, you can ask her anything. She's very down to earth, very humble. Will, will never take the, the praise. She'll always put it on somebody else. And um, that's why we love her. And she's, uh, she's just been amazing. And it's, and it's been so cool to see everybody appreciate her and accept her the way that she is. Shared with any motherly advice with you during this week leading up to the Super Bowl? Um, no, no. I just, uh, I just been uh, enjoying seeing her with all these uh, ads and uh, pushing uh, her uh, Super Bowl content. So. Your hometown of Cleveland has shaped you as a person, and how cool is it for you, you know, that the New Heights pod brings so much attention oh, yeah. to Cleveland and, <laughs> and all of that? That's, uh, that's one of the things I'm most proud of as well. Um, coming from Cleveland Heights, um, it's a beautiful city. It's a melting pot
cultures growing up. Um, I have so many friends of different races and, and, and just, uh, like I said, their, their family is different social classes and stuff. And uh, it's just given me a, a good understanding of, you know, who I am and how to accept everybody for who they are. And uh, I can't thank Cleveland Heights enough for that. You know, outside of that, giving me the desire and the love for life because of how happy I was as a kid. Um, it's just uh, that school system and the, the community, the families in that community uh, that mean everything to me. And I, I'll tell you what, I've, um, I have loved showcasing Cleveland Heights for, who, for what it is. And uh, I couldn't be more proud to be from there, to show, shine light back home. Um, it means everything that, uh, that Cleveland Heights gets the respect and gets the, um, gets the credit they deserve uh, for, uh, for what they do for the kids and the, the families in the, in the community. Let's go Tigers, baby. Oh, yeah. Not yet. But trust me, they're coming. They always do. Mama never fails. If you could compare yours and George Kittle's games, how would you compare? Yeah. Um, I mean, when it comes to a complete tight end, I don't know if there's another one in the game right now that's that's playing at a high level like George Kittle. Man, he um, from running routes to blocking to what he can do with the ball in his hand. And on top of that, how he catapults his team. You know, he brings everybody around. That's the energy over there in San Fran is George Kittle. And uh, there's a reason why he wears that C on his chest. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be an honor to go up against him. Um, and it's going to be motivating to try and play better than him on Sunday. But it's, uh, it's a team game. And I know, that, um, I know that I got a lot of faith in, uh, in my quarterback and the guys around me to get it done. Right here, similar note. Congratulations first and foremost for making the team yet another season. Thank you. But for the love of game of football, what is your why? What's up? What is your why? What is your why? My why? Yeah. Oh, my why is my family. My family, my friends, the city of Cleveland Heights back home. Um, they gave me such a beautiful upbringing and, and outlook on life that, um, you know, I love, to sh I love to show that. I love to be proud of that. And um, I love to shine light on that as well. So with the tight end, um, you, even the guys you meet in the championship games, like Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, even Detroit Hedl Florida, what does that say about the evolution of the tight end position and how important is it for offense to have like one or two big receiving yeah. yards? I mean, I, I've been a beneficiary of uh, the evolution of the tight end as well, with guys like Gronk and Jimmy Graham before I got in the league and um, even before that, I mean, Jason Witten and Antonio Gates. Tony Gonzalez, obviously, being in Kansas City and trying to fill his shoes. It's just been, uh, it's been so much fun seeing the game evolve to where it is now. Um, and the tight ends starting to get um, compensated uh, the way they should. Uh, knowing how much, uh, you know, an offense really depends on the, the skill set of a tight end. Knowing that it can, it, it can be a receiver, it can be an in-run in, in blocker. Um, and it's just, uh, we're going to keep trying to take this thing to the, uh, to the top level for sure. Did he take his game to another level this year, given all the turnover you guys had and the injuries now on the offensive line and in the receiving court? I 1,000% think he, uh, he took it to another level. He took it, he, the, the one thing about Pat is his competitiveness is he's never satisfied with where he is. He's always looking forward on how he can get better and how he can uh, keep progressing, uh, keep that steady incline of success going. And uh, that's both on and off the field. So it's, uh, it's fun to see him compete, and it's fun to see him have that desire uh, year in, year out, day in, day out, because that means a lot in that building. Have the same stats as he normally does. Did, you, did he ever mention that to you or anything like that? Or? No. We, uh, we might have talked about halfway through the year and just like, man, it's just, it's just not the same year. We've got to find different ways to win. We've got to find different ways to um, have success. Uh, you know, what, no matter what happens throughout the game, how much uh, we might not have success, we can't feel that that um, that burden. You know, you got to feel like you still have that confidence to go down there and finish a game the right way, and uh, and and find a way to win and have a little bit more grit than uh, than I don't know. I wouldn't say the flash of uh, previous years, but um, yeah. Uh, how will your uh, Super Bowl experience play a part against the San Francisco defense? Yeah, man, that's the. Uh, it'll be the biggest, the best defense that we played this year. I think uh, San Fran's got the most, uh, <laughs> the biggest front, the the fastest uh, linebackers that we've played. Um, they play very good together too. They got a lot of smart guys, a lot of veterans in the secondary um, that understand this offense. So it's it's going to take a collective unit, and uh, it's going to take touchdowns. I mentioned that earlier. It's going to take uh, putting up six points instead of three.
No, I just, I love, uh, I love 90s basketball, I love 90s sports. I grew up in the 90s idolizing a lot of the athletes. Um, I thought it was a pretty sweet hat. Um, it's, one of the, it's one of the only ones in the 90s Jordan didn't go to. Um, and uh, yeah, I got the Rasheed Wallace's, uh, I, got the, I got the seeds on, man. Shout out to Rasheed. I'm ready to get a tech right now. <laughs> and as an organization, a franchise, what do you mean to win a second Super Bowl in a row? You know what I mean? So winning back to back. How important is it for you? I mean, it's there's a there's another tier of uh, of football greats that uh, have won it back to back. You know, you uh, you look down the history of the line, and I think um, me and Pat have uh, have been talking about this since we won our first Super Bowl being a part of that that group and um unfortunately we, we fell short the the first time around and this time it's just you know we want it that much more man we want it that much because uh because you know how much more respected the, those teams are um knowing that they had uh they had what it took to win it a second time in a row knowing that they had that target on their back and that everybody was going to get their best shot doesn't happen that frequently i know it's because that might that there's got to be fortune. You got to stay healthy. You got to have great coaches year in, year out. When you win Super Bowls, everybody wants to take pieces from that that team, you know. And it is what it is. I mean, you see Eric Bieniemy go to Washington last, this past year, and um, you know, on on the defensive side, on the offensive side, you lose some of your best players. It just, uh, you know, it's not the it's not the easiest trying to trying to go year in, year out, knowing that you're going to get everybody's best shot, but. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's a sweet feeling when you get back here. We just got to go ahead and handle business. Travis, Ohio State is a leading candidate for winning NFL Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, you know, just with him being from, you know, the Browns, just wondering what are your thoughts on, on Miles and possibly winning that award? Man, I'm glad I didn't have to go up against him this year. He, um, he was on a terror, and it, and it looks to be that uh, he's found his groove in the NFL. And, um couldn't be happier for the city of Cleveland to have a guy like that because he's in the communities, he's making a difference, and he's in it for the right reasons. And uh, Cleveland's lucky to have that guy. So good luck to Miles on trying to get that defensive player of the year. The biggest thing is focus. You know, you try and watch the film, all right, and assess the play. The reasons why, uh, you know, maybe it wasn't all the way in your fingertips that I run my, could I have ran my route better? Could I have uh, had more had more alert uh, eyes and just like focus on where my eyes are when I'm coming out of the break? And then at the end of the day, am I am I thinking about my next move too fast? For me, I'm a guy that I, I like to play with the flow of the game, but understand where everybody's at so I can I can try and play fast. And sometimes I just play too fast for myself and um, and I don't help the team out when I do that. On with prize picks, question, can we lock in your more than 71 and a half receiving yards for Sunday? I ain't got nothing to do with bets out here, man. You're about to get me fined. <laughs> Would you rather eat one-star meals for the rest of your life, or every time you lock something, you lose an inch? Man, I can't even process what you just asked me. I'll take one-star meals, because losing the height doesn't sound too fun. Did you change anything from the regular season, or is it just a matter of finding the mojo? I think uh, my success is a product of my environment. I think everybody in that building is playing a lot better football. And um, I'm not saying that that was the reason why I wasn't having success. I just feel like we're all having a lot more success because we're all making plays for each other. We, um, we came together throughout the year, and we found ways to work throughout the week to get better. And, um, and sure enough, we learned from those, uh, those, those losses and the times where we could have played better throughout the games, got that better understanding on how to lean on our, our teammates uh, when the time's needed. And sure enough, uh, everybody's playing their best football right now. Mr. Travis, oh, Derek from the Houston Press. A lot of young men have signed their national letters of intent around the country today. What words of wisdom can you give them that's gonna help them transition from high school to the college level? Man, um, don't be afraid to compete. It's um, it's going to feel like uh, the, the playing field's leveled out a little bit. And um, don't be afraid of that. Don't, don't think that you got to go somewhere else because, you know, there's a, there's a challenge in front of you. Accept that challenge. Challenges are a beautiful thing in life, man. And, um, and when you attack them head on and you overcome those challenges, man, it means, it means the world. So uh, stay out of trouble and accept those challenges. Michael Carr with Bird Sports Network. Kind of a two-part question for you here. Um, what is your favorite thing about this team, and what is your favorite football memory with your brother? 
My favorite thing about this team is uh, the resilience, um, the ability to, to snap and clear, to, to find another way to win. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy getting everybody's best shot in the NFL. But um, I'll tell you what, when you, when you go through those ups and downs and you're resilient and you find ways to keep coming together as a team, as a unit, that chemistry, you just want it that much more for the guy next to you. And that's why I love this team. Um, my favorite memory with my brother, um, unfortunately, probably isn't his favorite memory, but it's being on the mountaintop and playing in the Super Bowl with him. What's the best advice he's ever given? The best advice my brother ever is... Um, if you say that again, I'll kill you. That one, that one hit home for me. And I didn't say it again. I wanted to ask you about your relationship with George Kittle, how that started, and how it's developed, and just kind of, you know, how you guys vibe. Man, I, um, I was actually asked about George Kittle in the building uh, when we were, uh, when he was coming out of the draft, and um, I just watched him on film, I was like, man, this guy's, a, this guy's fun to watch. You know, his energy, how he plays the game, you could tell by how he was getting, when he caught a ball and he, he, he would get tackled, how the team rallied around him. You could tell he was loved in that locker room. Um, and then on top of that, when I met him when we first played uh, in a preseason game together, um, he was just a down, down-to-earth kind of guy. Um, and then uh, you see the success. You see what he could do with the ball in his hand when he was younger and all the explosive plays. And uh, Yeah, it's just kind of been a, a, a fun um, growing of a friendship and a brotherhood. Uh, starting up tight in you together with uh, Greg Olson. Um, it's just an absolute honor not only to go against him here, but to know who he is and what he stands for as a, as a man and uh, as a family man. And it's just, uh, I got all the respect for the guy. Surprise that there are, there are probably still people out there who doubt uh, Patrick Mahomes and, and this Chiefs team. The sports, man. The sports until you're, uh, until you're crowned king. Um, you're going to have those doubters. You're going to have those naysayers, man. And it's just, uh, you got to use it as fuel. You can't think about it. I'm sure Pat uses that as fuel. He, um, he's a competitive son of a gun. He's, he's, uh, he's always uh, hearing what the naysayers got to say to make sure he uh, channels that right mindset. Is there anything beyond the surface level of the Niners that you're really looking forward to, that challenge that you're looking forward to facing and taking on with them? Other than they're, they're, they're going to be the best defense we played all year. Um, I mean, if that's not motivating enough, I don't know what is. That team, uh, we're going to be on our P's and Q's. And, uh, you know, we got, some, we got some good work we got to get in this week until that game. But uh, it's definitely going to be our best challenge yet. The challenge of showing how to beat a defense like that, taking on that challenge, trying to prove that. Is that fun in itself, kind of solving and putting together? Are you kidding me? I love that challenge, man. I want to go up against the best there ever is. And uh, with that mentality, man, you just... You just got to rally the groups, make sure that you're ready for every single possible scenario and, um, you know, give them your best shot and see who's the best. Uh, a lot of young players start out not as a tight end. They're linemen or receivers and then later on they become tight ends. With uh, what you and uh, Gronk have done for the tight end position, do you think that will be more players wanting to be a tight end from a younger age? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the tight end room is uh, it's a unique position. It hasn't, it hasn't always had the glorified, you know, thousand-yard receivers or all the touchdowns, and um, you don't necessarily get the ball thrown to you as much, or at least that's what the perception was uh, before guys like Gronk and Tony Gonzalez and Ant Antonio Gates. All these guys came into the league and were just absolutely d dominant pass catchers. And uh, they did it in a flashy way, in a fun way, in a way that you could cheer for them and get excited and want that guy on your team, right? So it's just, um, I think the tight end room is uh, naturally filled with a lot, of, uh, a lot of guys that just love the game of football and will do whatever the team needs them to do, whether it's block, run, catch, uh, do whatever they need to do to, to get the win for their team. And, um, you know, just the ultimate teammate, man. Did you have um, with your basket? Do you feel like that adds more pressure, or do you feel more comfortable to win this year? I feel uh, I feel comfortable right now, but um, I'm starting to I'm starting to get antsy and starting to get excited for this one. Uh, nobody puts more pressure on me than me, and uh, I know how to handle that uh, at this point in my career. So I've been pretty fortunate. But um, being a leader, I got to make sure I rally everybody else around me as well. Travis, did you imagine the podcast would take off like it did, and no. do you imagine it might be? something you rely on after I never thought that th that would be the uh, the retirement plan um, I always thought that uh, I always thought that everybody looked at me and my brother like we were polar opposites 
and you probably still do to an extent, but Jason is a, I don't think people knew enough about my brother, so I wanted to definitely, you know, just have a, if I was ever going to do a podcast, it was going to be with him. Um, I never knew it would get to this point. I had no idea that people would just jump on, you know, my brother's storytelling and how funny he is and everything. So it, it's been so much fun seeing everybody accept uh, not only our brotherhood for what it is, but um, see him take off in, in his own right with his documentary and the podcast and everything. Um, it's just been awesome to see. Travis, do you have a favorite country song? Favorite country song? Yeah. Man, R.I.P. Toby Keith, man. Should have been a cowboy. Said that you're one of the DJs in the locker room. He said that you're the best person to go to. Like, the disco, eclectic nice. I just want to get the groove going. You know what I mean? I play everything. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't play everything in the locker room because you'll get booed if you do that. So you got to play something with at least a groove and a beat to it, something somebody can just kind of vibe to. Um, typically, it's like a funky, like you said, disco. Um, Let's go disco, maybe uh, some EDM a little bit. N more house vibes, though. Not necessarily like dubstep or anything like that. Who's that? Oh, yeah. Everybody would get booed. If you play a bad song in there, they'll, they'll let you know for sure. Jason is the first team on pro this year. Do you have a hard time, and he's contemplating retirement, do you have a hard time going out and is the top, at the top of your profession? Would that be a hard thing? I think that's the way you want to do it, right? You don't want to go out as, I don't know, not, not a successful uh, individual. I think uh, he's had so much success in his career, it's not about that. I think it's more so about just uh, whether or not he's, he's okay with uh, giving up this game that he loves and this passion that he has every single day to go to work and um, I think it's something that uh, you no know, everybody's going to miss when they're done playing. So they, he just doesn't want to cut himself short if he's got some time left. It would be hard for you not to see him playing anymore. I mean, it would definitely be awkward not uh, to look over at those Eagles and not see 62 out there running around on the field. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see if that happens. Can you describe what Tom Melvin's like as a tight end? Coach Mel, Coach Mel, man, he's uh, he's been. One of, my, uh, one of my favorite coaches of all time, man. Just the, the ability to relate and bounce things off of each other, find a common ground, um, and on top of that, motivate me throughout the, throughout the years, throughout the week, to, to keep trying to get better and keep taking my game to a new place. Um, you know, he's, he, he's got that fire in him when you need it, and uh, on top of that, man, he's, uh, he's one of the most relatable guys in the building. It just makes it easy on everybody to, you know, come in and uh, want to get their job done. Travis, uh, Andy talked about you not thinking about being the best tight end of all time. He said that's not something you're concerned about. But did you ever envision your career going this way and potentially being the best? I'll tell you what. I, I used to, I used to lose sleep over uh, the success I had early on, and or the lack of success I, I would have early on, whether it was drops or just not being ready for the moment, um, not having any success in the in the past game and certain certain games. Uh, and I used to have that desire to say, man, I want to be the best. I'm not, I want to be, I want to be known as the one that had the most yards, the one that had the most catches, the one that had the most touchdowns and the most Super Bowls. And um, you got to be so fortunate to, to even, you know, go to the playoffs, let alone uh, get, get plays drawn up for you and things like that. Um, so I, uh, I've rechanneled that to just being the best teammate that I possibly can uh, day in, day out. And, at the end of the year, let the let the I don't know the chips fall where they may, as uh, and see who's the best team out there. And um, I enjoy having a team success a lot more than I enjoy having my individual success week to week. What advice would you give to those who suffer from imposter syndrome and compare themselves to others? Man, um, use it as motivation, but don't don't use it as a gauge of. Uh, of your worth, you know what I mean, of who you are, you know, I think that uh, you can get caught up in a lot of those things and start thinking negatively about yourself and um, that's not a road you need to go down. You should always have confidence in who you are and who you are is always gonna be good enough, so um, compare yourself for motivation, don't compare yourself for judgment. And I was like, can you give a shout out to WBN Boston? WBN? WEBN Boston. WEBN Boston, shout out everybody. 
have a bunch of years left in the tank? I mean, do you feel the road long? I'll tell you what, I know I got one more game in me. I don't know. I don't know how this road is going to go after this. I think uh, I'd be silly to tell you that I'm going to retire after this year. I'm going to think about. I'm always thinking about what's next, um, and I think that uh, this game is. I love this game so freaking much. I'm going to be. I'd be silly to stop anytime soon, um, and I know I'm going to miss the hell out of it when I when I do stop playing. But um, I know I'm fired up for this this game on Sunday. Yeah, take like another decade. <laughs> no, it's not. I know. I know. I'd be far fetched to even believe in myself to try and get to that uh, milestone. Um, and I got all the respect for Tony. His he's he's been such a such an unbelievable just mentor. Um, just a, a guy I can rely on if I ever need anything in this football world, man. Um, and I can't thank him enough for who he's been trying to fill his shoes all these years. And uh, he's really helped motivate me to be uh, who I am today. Uh, we, we see you develop as a leader of the team these past few years. Do you, do you think that after your career you could become a coach? Is it something that you consider? I thought about it. I thought about it, and then I thought about how much easier a life would be outside of coaching. Um, they put in a lot, a lot of hours, and um, I love this game, but I love playing this game more than I, I think I would love uh, calling a game or, um, I don't know, coaching the tight end room. But I'll, uh, I'll forever be a coach from, from the stands, from the sidelines, from afar. Um, I'm somebody, I love to pass the knowledge, I love to pass the baton to, to younger guys, the younger generation, that's why, you know, when uh, George Kittle and Greg Olson came to me about tight end you and being that, uh, that area or that, that voice for the tight ends year in, year out, and uh, helping everybody kind of progress, um, I was all for it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm forever going to try and be that uh, mentor for guys under me because I had unbelievable mentors and coaches throughout my life. <laughs> the numbers got better in the playoff than in regular season. What changes? Um, I think I'm a product of my environment. I think um, you know uh, we're playing better as a team. I think everybody in the in the building realizes you know how we need to attack the work week, how we need to attack the certain challenge at hand, depending on what team we're playing. Um, and with that being said, just being more accountable. You know, sometimes. Uh, I was dealing with drops this year. I was dealing with uh, getting out of my breaks, um, and then fi so finding ways throughout the week that I can attack those weaknesses, attack those, and make them stronger, so that I can be more accountable for the guys next to me. Who do you think is the best uh, tight end in the history of the NFL? Man, I would say Tony Gonzalez is the best to ever do it. Um, but my favorite is probably Gronk. Uh, success for three tight ends. So what is that? Um. You know, we got really good tight ends in, in Kansas City right now, man. My guy Noah Gray, Blake Bell, um, and the list goes on, Matty Bushman and Zay. I think it's, uh, it's been amazing to see uh, how much success we've had these past few weeks um, and the accountability that the coaching is and the, and the, and the guys around us put on, put on the tight end room, man. We just, uh, we love that. We love the, we love the opportunity to be out there. Um, and we just go out there and we, we do whatever we need to do for the team. You know, it's kind of the, the motto of the tight end position. Would you need us to block? All right, we'll block. You need us to go out and catch a pass? We'll catch a pass. And um, it's athletic enough and physical enough as a group uh, that we can get anything done out there on the field. So we got the ultimate mismatch, we feel like. Are you the Aries Georgia Cleveland Brown Stadium? I, uh, I haven't even thought about it, no. Uh, as a receiver, as a tight end, what's your favorite route to run? Say it again. What's your favorite route to run? My favorite route, man. There's nothing like a go ball, baby. Just not throw me up top, baby. Let me, let me, uh, let me loosen these hammies up and go up top. Last one, guys. Not yet. I don't even know uh, the exact field I want to get into. Um, I know I want to do something still with the game of football, but I, I love all sports um, and I love going to events. I love going to, I love all, all types of music. Um, I'm still dabbling in a few different areas that, uh, that I don't know if I'm going to love it or not. So I think that's the, uh, the, the plan over the off seasons that I've had in the NFL is figure out exactly um, what I love and what I can, I don't know, latch onto as a career from that point on. But 
Um, I wish there was a clear-cut vision, but there's never a clear-cut vision with me.